Yeah, uh, okay, today we'll be talking about scope and recursion, but we'll talk about recursion first. So I think before I start, uh, maybe like I want to have a rough idea, like um, there's plenty of you, so perhaps like can you guys share, each of you like share like, um, have you, uh, okay, like, let's start with something easy. Like. Have anyone attempted doing recursion or not? Uh, if you have, uh, can you go to the like yes button on the participant list and just press yes? And if you haven't attempted any recursive question, press no. Okay, please don't turn it off first. I just want to see the numbers. Just go to the participant list and press yes if you have attempted a recursion, uh, recurs a recursion question and press no if you have an attempted a non if you have an attempted a recursive question. Okay, so hi Chanson. Morning. Morning. Okay, uh, I'm just asking questions uh, like whether you have attempted a recurs a recursive question before or not. Just press yes. Okay, so we have a good split around nine and nine. Okay, okay, okay. So for those of you who have, who's, uh, hey, wait, 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 don't turn off your first. My next question is, for those of you who said yes, right, did you face, uh, did, do you still face difficulties or do you, can you come up with a recursive function easily or not? If you face difficulties, uh, you can change to no now. Okay, so around five of you, four, three, three of you can do recursion lah. Okay, um, so I, I guess we'll start with the question. I think uh, starting with the question is the easiest lah. Okay, so I'll, I'll go jump immediately straight to uh, part three, uh, the recursion versus iteration. Um, yeah, let me join my iPads first. So, um, for those of you who haven't seen the tutorial question, have have a good read of it. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll do. There's these two questions, basically sum problem and factorial problem. Uh, for sum problem is basically given a positive number and the sum of all digits is obtained by adding the digit one by one. For example, the sum of 5, 2, 6, 3, 4 is 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus 4 equals to 20. Give write a recursive function, uh, an iterative function sum n to compute the sums of all the digits n. You may assume that n is greater than 0. Oh, uh, that's my chip. Hi Bingson, nah, there's, today I don't think there will be any links lah, today. Today we're just focusing on just like how to learn, <laughs> how to learn recursion. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll start with this one, um, some problem. So um, let's start with iterative, the thing that we have been learning all these past week. So given a number, say n, 1, 2, 3, right, we want to sum all the numbers together, right? So this is 1 plus 2 plus 3. So what we want to do here is actually iterate through, um, what we want to do here is iterating through the numbers one by one. Um, so for every digit in n, uh, I want to have a final number here, like say final equals to zero, then basically final equals plus equals to uh, the digit. Correct. Okay. So this is iterative and then simply you return final. Now, 
uh, when we are dealing with recursive, right? I think the gist of recursion is basically, um, basically it's a function that calls itself back. So then when we have a recursion, right? Def and, uh, sorry. Uh, basically, we need to uh, somewhat have a function that calls itself uh, return some something. That's the gist of recursion. Uh. Like that, I think the definition of recursion itself is basically there's a circular thing that calls itself back. But then if you notice, right, if it keeps on calling itself back, right, then there will never be an end. It will just keep on calling itself back over and over and over again. It will just like here and back here and then back here. Hence, there must. Oh, okay, my bad. So, wait, let me repeat. Total. for every digit in n total plus digit return total. So when we can't deal with re recursive, we have this return that calls the sum. All right. Then it will keep on calling itself back, but so Hence, we need a conditional that breaks the looping. So we want to, if something, if a condition is satisfied, then uh, I'll just stop recursing and we'll simply just return something. If something, then I'll ret return something without calling itself back. So the ideal case is that um, when we are recursing, right, we want to go through a range of numbers. Uh, so like from n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, until so on. So in this case, right, in this case, well, what's going to happen is that basically when n is 0, I'll return 0. And if n is not zero, then I will start adding the digits up. Now, um, when we are also recursing, right, um, we will also call the function, but then we wanna, we don't wanna just like here in uh, insert n, because like if then whenever you call some n, right, then it will return some n again and return and it will keep on getting n, and n will never go to zero. Hence, you want to make sure that um, you change the value n to another value. Lah. So in this case, um, what we can do is that we can actually uh, cut off the numbers one by one. So instead of like this, say we have n like one, two, three, we can like say, take the first digit, one and take the last digit two three into this sum so we have like um the first digit of every number and then plus the first digit plus the sum of the leftover digits at this at this particular function, right? Um, it so it will when we run this, right? When we run say sum one two three, what's gonna happen is that the return value is gonna be like one plus sum two three, one plus two plus sum three, one plus two plus three plus sum zero. And then if we remember, right, sum zero is 
will give me zero. So if you notice here, right, in a recursion, what you want to do is that first you want to have a re at least a return statement that calls itself. But it cannot be just like calling itself back lah. Like, it's not that easy. Because if you keep on calling itself back exactly the same way, right? Um, it will just go on an infinite loop. In fact, you want to do some calculation here like, as, you, as you need. So, the ideal thing is that from your end, right? You want to take something from it. You want to take one thing. Say, so like if n is 10, maybe you want to reduce it to 9. Or perhaps in this case, if it's a digit, if it's a string, a, b, c, you want to take off the first letter, A off, and just like take PC. And basically, you want to reduce it a bit and put it here in the uh, callback function. And then the thing that you take off earlier, right, it goes into, the, goes into here so that it keeps on expanding like this. All right. And then at a certain point, you should have a base case. A base case is the thing that will terminate your code. Lah. So if we actually see exam, uh, the actual code here. Oops, one key. If you see the actual code over here, right? This is the actual function. Lah. Uh, for iteration. So we have a base or initial value and then we have the computation and then uh, you have the contingent or next value. Like, this is why when I say like you cannot just like simply call back the function. You need to like change it so that there is a change of value. And then you have a stop case or base case. So like you stop when they are really, uh, you stop when you reach this number. And in the case of recursion, you do not need a variable because it is already all contained in the return value. I know it's a lot to take in, lah. But uh, for recursion, right, the best way to take in is basically by doing a lot of practice. Now, is that is this uh, clear? I know it's not it's not the clearest explanation, lah. But is that okay? <laughs> If there are any questions, please ask now. Like, legit, this one, I'm afraid that uh, you guys might be lost. If you guys are okay, just give me a thumbs up. If you guys are not, this is the perfect time to ask questions. And it's perfectly fine to ask questions. If you guys are just lost, just ask, just say lost. Or... What if there are exceptions that you have to add in for recursive recursion functions? Okay, um, David, do you have an example question that we can do? Maybe. Like a factorial of zero? Factorial of zero. Then it's easy, law. Like, um, yeah. Uh, how do I? Yeah. Let me just get the blank screen. Okay, say, uh, okay, I, I guess we're doing the next question, which is, uh, factorial, uh. Um, so in this case, we, uh, we are given already the base case is zero. La. So, um, okay, I think here, like, let's take some notes first. Like, first is like, base case is 
when when n is zero, then uh, the result is one. I think this is the base case. Else is defined as this one law, which is a uh, fact n equals to n times fact n minus one. Right. I think this one is the most important things like when you're coming with a recursive function. So with that, with this, we will do a def fact if n is zero, then return one else uh else yeah return n times fact n minus one okay how do we do recursion for the burger price question uh wait we'll go there soon can i do if n is less than or equals to zero return one for a base case sure why not I mean, for iterative, right? Def basically, um, let's say we do with n equals to n equals to five. Five factorials mean like five, no, five times four times three times two times one. So we'll just start with like um, answer equals to one because it's the base case. And then for i in range one till six, answer times i, return answer. Oops. I think one thing that you kind of want to note as well for recursion is that usually recursion walks backwards. The reason is, uh, the reason why we walk backwards is that because we want a universal terminating point. If you see, right, if you see an iteration over here, if you see an iteration, your endpoint is not universal. Your endpoint depends on n. And, but the thing is for recursion, you cannot really do that because like the endpoint is kind of built into the function. So usually a universal endpoint for all is usually like small numbers, uh, 0, 1, empty string. Those are universal. Hence, what we want to do is that for recursion, usually we walk backwards. What, why will recursion not become an infinite loop? Say, if we say factorial n minus 1, technically n will tend to negative infinity. How does it know how to break the loop itself? And that is why we have the base case over here. This one is like the most important part of recursion. You know, like basically this is the thing that um, tries to stop you guys from going to negative infinity, this over here. Because at a certain point, right, say we have an n pos a positive n, and n greater than zero, say like 10, right? Then, then like it will give me nine times a. Say we have factorial five, fact five, it will give me five times fact four, five times four, that gives me fact three, fact two, fact one, and then fact zero. Now at this particular point over here, it will not go here, but in fact it will go here in, instead which will be replaced by one, and it does not call itself. That's why it will not go into an infinite loop. This one is the most important part, lah, that uh, it should, when you come up with a recursive function, it should always come up with the base case first. This one should come first. That's why I think when you are dealing with iteration or recursion, recursive question, the best way is to start small, start with small ends.
Okay, so whether it's n is zero, n is one, n is two, or perhaps like um, empty string, one character, two character, etc. I think uh, another way for you guys to figure out of pattern is say say the function is not given, then uh, you need to start off with small n's. Uh. Say for the factorial case earlier, right? Start with small n. If n is 0, then the result must be 1. If n is 1, the result is 1 also. n is 2, result is 1 times 2. n is 3, is 1 plus 2 plus a eh, 1 times 2 times 3 and is 4 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 just create as many as possible that until you can actually conjure a pattern here and I'll, I think I'll stop here I think if you can see over here right like when n is 5 right when n is 5 over here it is actually built from something from n when n is 4. It's actually the same thing over here. And then when n is 4, it's actually built from the same thing when it's uh, n is 3. Uh, and it keeps on going on the same thing. Huh? So in this case, we can actually do like, here's why this is when you actually come up and create the recursive function. Huh? Here you can. 5 um, and then like fact 4 because you know it's actually the same thing and then for fact 4 is basically uh, fact 3 this is fact 2 and fact 1 and then basically just 1 and in this case, after you come up with all these things, then you can start to abstract them out. You, you should see the, how the numbers relate to the n. So if you can see right here, 5 is actually n, and 4 is actually like one number less than the n. So fact n minus 1 times n. So that's how you come up with patterns. Okay. So I think... Uh, Okay, um, I have one practice question. Actually, I have one practice question that maybe we can do together if we have time. Lah. Let me just share it with you guys. Okay, uh, I've sent a question in the Telegram group. If you guys have time to do it, then uh, feel free. But if I think if we have time at the end, we'll do that lah. But if we don't, then we'll just uh, skip that. So I guess moving on to the recursion to the burger question lah earlier. So recap from the previous tutorial that we can create a customized burger. We have the price list for each ingredient, right? Blah 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 blah. Your task is to come up with write the function burger price. So um. I think uh, instead of asking you guys to code, which some of you have did, I'll just like explain lah. Okay. Um, if you remember last week, right? Uh, last week, uh, I think the uh, it was more like uh, you have a total total sum, which starts with zero, and then you'll for ingredient sorry bad spelling in burger then basically what you want to do is basically uh, you want to sum up with the total check price no oh, actually that's a bad example for burger right, you do a lot of if else right if statements if I is equals to B, then uh, total 
five if else if i equals to c then total is plus by another number and so on and so on and then at the end return total correct so i guess like the question is like how do we actually come up with um recursive function so first of all we need to come up with a base case okay so uh, what is the base burger la? what is the most basic burger in fact if you think about it right the most basic burger is actually a burger that uh nothing burger meaning it's an empty string la. this is actually the base burger over here now the question is what happens when the burger has nothing in it has no ingredients in it in it uh, if I think you guys know that the answer is that yeah the price is zero so we have a base case already here this is the first the very first step uh, figuring out the base case have once you have figured out the base case right then you can write the base case already um, I'll just if burger equals to empty string return zero okay this is our initial base case and then after that um now let me just scroll to an empty space If burger is an empty string, then return zero. Else, uh, this is the difficult question. Lah. So uh, we remember that, uh, not difficult, lah, but yeah, basically. So now uh, say the burger is not an empty string. It means that the burger has ingredients, say like B, V, P, P. Remember, if we see this code, right, what happens here is that uh, we take one ingredient, we take one ingredient, we check the price, and sum it up. Okay? So then, it means that we need to take one. Uh, in this case, right, in this case of string, so we should take one of the ingredients. Uh. Now, how you want to take the ingredient is up to you. Uh, you want to take it from the front. It means that you, the way you take it is basically um, burger zero. If you want to take it from the back, then it's basically burger minus one. So it's up to you. Uh. You want to take, say, this part over here, then it's this one. Uh. So we take it i is equals to burger zero. Then now you can start to do your conditionals lah. If i equals to b else if i equals to c, etc. etc. Now I'll do one return statement here. Now this is the interesting part. Lah. If we remember that earlier for uh, if we remember earlier that uh, for it's a bit messy. For if you can see the green box, for recursion you don't really need any temporary results. And do not need a variable to store your results. So th this is the case. Lah. So um, in this case, what we want to do is like basically, um, what is the price of the burger? Say for like the burn, right? The price price is five plus the sum. Basically, the sum here is the same. The additional sign here is representing the same thing. And then 
we call the function back burger price. Now, what's inside here is that we cannot just simply put in our burger again. Because if we put our burger again, like B, V, P, B, it means that it will like keep on recursing or like 5 plus B, V, P, B, 5 plus 5 plus B, V, P, B, and so on. What we want to do is that we want to actually like um, remove ingredients that we have actually summed up earlier. Basically, ingredients that we have calculated, we should remove it already. Remember our first principle, right, is that um, so that the value inside the function here should be changing, should keep on changing. Uh. And ideally, it should be changing. It should be, in a, in a way, reduced. There should be a reduction occurring here. So in this case, uh, the reduction is that since we have calculated the first character here, right, we want to remove the first character. So to remove the, character, the first character, using a uh, string slicing, burger one till the end. So that's how you do it. Lah. You can see that there's a reduction here. From BVBB, it will be reduced to VPB. And then next, it will be reduced to PB, and finally P, and then finally just an empty string. Lah. Okay. So, I think to show the actual code. I think. Yeah, this is the actual code. Lah. I hope you kind of followed my, uh, you kind of follow with the step by step around how to come up with a recursion, recursive function. Basically, there are some things that you need to figure out. Lah. The first is like the base case. Second is the value of the iteration. Lastly is what's the next value to compute? next to compute and as you can see earlier right what you want to do is actually like you list down the n from zero to n, actually n and you want to see how like each of these are related to the previous ends uh, and so on and so on that's what you kind of want to do there. How you see relation between n and n minus one, n minus one and n minus two. That's the ideal case. Lah. So I think um, uh, I think I want to do the, the question that I sent on Telegram. Let me see if I can open it. Let me see if I can open it. Oh, let me. Where is it? Oh, it's not here. Here it is. Okay, so we have this thing. The, no, the function number sticks, takes in the input, create the input 
as the grid size. So in this case, this is uh, one, two, three, four. And the number of sticks is here is four, 12, 24, 40. I provide a recursive implementation of the num function number of sticks. Okay. Uh, I think here let's try to figure out first some uh, pattern. So in the case of n is 0, then the number of 6 is 0. In the case of n is 1, the number of 6 is 4. Right. And in the case of n is 2, the number of 6 is 12. However, if you keep on listing down as numbers, right, then uh, you will really hardly see any pattern there. Correct. So what we want to do here is that, um, oops. What we want to do is that we can see that there are boxes, the boxes here are like kind of building up. So we want to use that as a reference for now on. So this box over here at one is also a box here at two. So in this case, I would separate that. 4 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. And equals to 3. This box over here is represented here. So that's 12. Added by. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then uh, n equals to 4 again. Oops. It will be represented here. And then the rest is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 60, uh, extra 16 plus the initial 24. Okay. Now you can, if we should represent it as a function name like f, oops, f, n, then we can see that there's, we can kind of conjure a pattern here. So in this case, right, this one is, um, F4, F3, F2, oh sorry, this one is F3, sorry. F3, F2, F1. And this is, if you wanna make it extra, F0, which is zero. And here is apparently our base case. So we kinda of have discovered our base case here. This is our base case. <clears throat> if some of you set this as a base case, um, I don't see it as a problem. It's perfectly fine as well. But it's more ideal that the first one is the base case lah, for a more gen general pattern. Now, we know that uh, uh, the, the, now trying to figure out the return statement, we kind of know that, you know, like for every n, right, you call in the function n minus 1. But then everything has an addition, lah, which if you can figure out that there's a pattern, lah, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's added by 4, 8, 12, 16. You can figure it out, it should be the multiple of 4. As we can actually conjure a common pattern, n times 4, is basically for n. So oh, everything that's here, right, is for n. So hence, you return f n minus one plus four times n. Uh, do you guys understand my explanation? I mean, like I'm just like explain explaining a lot, so you guys can uh, have a rough idea, like. How to deal with multiple questions and how do you attempt 
what is your approach? Because I think what's unique about recursion and recursion and iteration is that it's not it's not exactly Python, but it's rather like a way to code, a way of coding, an approach, an attempt that you can implement with all languages, lah. Not just Python. So in this case, what you want to do is actually like learn the way of coming up with, coming up with a recursive function so that you can implement it in any language. Lah. So if you guys can have a rough idea, can you just like give a thumbs up? If not, ask questions. Uh, hello. Hello, who's that? Uh, uh, it's Harish. My name is Harish. No. Uh, okay, because I uh, cannot... Can, can I just ask uh, oh, what's yeah, the sure. thinking process for coming up with, with this last line? I get the reduction statement, but how do you decide like what what the what the expression will be? Mm. Or, like, the thinking process. Okay, okay. I think there's no one easy thinking process, but generally, generally speaking, right? First, as I mentioned earlier, first you what you wanna do is like you kinda and when when you know that the question asks for recursion, right? It means that there must be some sort of pattern that uh, you want to see how N4 is related to N3 and how N3 is related to N2, how N2 is related to N1. And this is, I think, to say that uh, there is a pattern between consecutive numbers is not necessary. Sometimes there might be a pattern that is just like jump, like from N4 to N2. So generally what you want to see is that how can you actually uh, compose your answer from previous answers? Something like that, if that makes sense. If you can see in the pattern over here, in the matchsticks pattern here, you kind of can see that N2 is a buildup from N1. The 3 times 3 uh, square is a buildup from the 2 times 2 square. The 4 times 4 square is a buildup from the 3 times 3 square. So in this case, we want to extract that pattern out like, and see how they are related. How are, how can uh, 4 times 4 is built from 3 times 3? How can 3 times 3 is built from 2 times 2? Something like that. So that we don't, we can create like a recursive chain. So in this case, we managed to build that, oh yeah, uh, for the 4 times 4 square right, is built by 1, built by 1, 3 times 3 square plus the edges on the outside. Now after you figure now after you figure out the recursive function call, now basically you need to uh, figure out the excess la. Basically if you can see everything has an excess, excess and excess. Now that, that one is the slightly harder part. Where you kind of need to see the the link between the the current n and the excess lah. Um, I know my words are not the most concise words, and you might find it confusing in coming up with the written statement. But generally, that's the way you come up with the written statement lah. Like, you need to see how this is related with previous functions, function calls, and how. You can figure out like how does the excess is related to the n value. Sometimes the excess does not relate to n value. Sometimes the excess can be a constant number. And if it's constant, then simply just put it a constant number. Lah. Um, another thing, right, is that uh, maybe what you want to do is uh, <coughs> What you want to do is actually start small, right? As I mentioned earlier, like start smaller, start with n with zero, n is one, n is two, and so on. Once you start small, right, you will start understanding like the pattern. Because if you try to expand this one, right, if you expand this one, it's basically it's gonna be like four times five plus four times four plus four times three plus four times two plus four times one. Which is basically the reverse of this. Lah. 
yeah, the reverse of this. If we go from this, yeah. Uh, I hope I hope that helps answer your question. I hope. Is there any parts that are isn't aren't clear? i I think there's some parts that's still unclear before I move on to the next question. Is there anything unclear? Uh hi. Is it possible to backtrack to the burger question or should I ask that from the tutorial? Oh, okay, we can, 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 we can backtrack, but okay. Uh, okay, for order and growth in terms of time and space, I I, I should not go, go there lah, because like that one can, I can digress quite a lot. It's not included in the curriculum lah, okay. Okay, uh, David. Yeah, yeah, here, here what I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. so for the burger, right, what I don't get is, you know, your return function, yeah, mm -hmm. I get it that you know the if you must put every condition for mm -hmm. like every letter. But burger and after that you, you put one. So wouldn't every other loop, right? You know when it recurs down, you always look at burger one, <coughs> which is you. I, I don't get how, how it like take, takes out value, you know, with you each recursion. No, you remember right, uh, index starts from zero. Yeah. So say I have a burger B V P B zero one two three. So when I do burger one, I'll start from here, ma. And this will give me V P B. So in this case, I'll have zero point five plus burger price V P B instead. See, it's already a reduced version of my earlier one. And then basically, if I expand it again, it's basically the price of V, the price of V, which I forgot, plus the burger price, VPB, 0, 1, 2, 3, I'll take this part, PB, and so on and so on. Do you get it, oh, Davian? So you will just keep picking out the value, is it? Yeah, lah, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. You take one value out, put it in. Okay, okay, thanks. I think there's a lot of way to approach recursion question. I think I did have like, yeah, la, like, if you find my words are quite incoherent, it's because like, there are basically, there are many ways to approach this question. La. Like, yeah, la, you can always come up with a base case, you can come up with this and that. There's no like one bullet, one silver bullet. So I think it's it depends on each question. Because in each question, right, sometimes it's easier to figure out the base case first. There are some questions that are easier to figure out the return function first. There are some questions that are easier to figure out this and that first. Uh. So once you kind of figure that out, right, your life will be much, much easier. In fact, actually recursion, recursive functions are, once you kind of get it, it's easier to do recursive rather than iterative. I think one thing that I want to mention, right, is that not all function, not everything can be made into recursion. Lah. So I think the good news about this is that if a question is recursion, right, a recursive a recursion question, it it won't be weird because you cannot create, you cannot convert everything to recursion. So there will always be some sort of pattern. Lah. And so not all iteration can be made recursion, but all recursion can be made iteratively. Any other questions? I don't want to, for this one, I really don't want to move on until everyone is okay with it. If everyone is okay, can everyone give us a thumbs up? And this one, I want to see thumbs up from everyone, if everyone is okay. There are still some people who are not okay, I guess. Okay. All right. Okay, I think I have like 80% thumbs up already. So I think moving on to the very final question. 
I think for the final question, I will not do it for you. I'll just give it to you guys to actually try and do it yourself. So yeah, we have this question, final sum, and the Euler, you, what the Euler constant? Okay, I'm, yeah. So um, I'll give you guys a uh, ten minutes and try to figure it out, lah. Okay. Um, yeah, try to figure it out on your own. I think for this one, right, just for, um, you can do both. You kind of can do both, but maybe you want to focus more on the recursive. Maybe some of you are better in like coming up with the iterative function and then converting it to recursive. Or maybe some of you are just good at coming up with the recursive and making it iterative. Or perhaps some of you are just good in just coming up with the function immediately. Regardless, try to do it lah. Was the, okay. uh, I'll give you guys 10 minutes until 10, 11, 11.05 to do both questions. Uh. For final sum, perhaps you want to create, do the sum problem first. My Python says maximum recursion depth exceeded in comparison. Um, can you take a screenshot and send it via Telegram? Uh, I'll pause the recording for that. Is this recorded? I'll pause the recording first. Yeah, I changed. I changed to all the it works. Don't know why. Yeah, uh, I mean. That's a syntax problem lah, cause I don't I don't think Python uses I don't know what that line is lah to explain or I know so I assume you have prior coding experience in it is it but it's not with Python. Okay, thanks. Yeah, guys. Uh, thanks, Pinkson, for sharing. For the rest of you, please, if you guys are doing the code, maybe you wanna share and code share. I'm waiting. Oh yeah, I see some cur uh, cursor. So yeah, please. Somebody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, um, so let's discuss. Let's start with the Euler constant first because it looks easier. In this case, um, it's kind of easy la, here. In this case, like, um, when you do some sort of summation, right, you know, like, mostly, right, the base case is zero. So, in this case, you want to do, like, iteration n. So, it will keep on iter iterating n. So, it means, like, when, basically, when n reaches zero, la, it will return zero. Okay? I think we have figured out the base case here from the function. Else, basically what you want to do is uh, do this series, but backwards. So perhaps like return x to the power of n divided by n factorial plus find e x n minus 1. So you, you move from the right to the left. Let's see what uh, he did. Basically, it, it is the same. Lah. Mm. For find e, he does this. Uh, this is the base case, which is OK also. Oh, I think it's 1. OK, then my, my bad. Else, this is the base case. You can see that this is actually the function part over here. This is the function. And here is actually the recursive call where he minus one. I think we see if someone did anything else. Yeah, Euler recurrence, this one same way. If n is less than one, return zero, which is a perfect base case. And this one, 
if you can see there's no else, Hadi, good job. So uh, I think I, this code is also correct. So it means that because you kind of know like, if it doesn't satisfy this, then this chunk of code will be skipped and simply will go to this part. Same way as else. But this kind, but the difference is that he put it at front instead of at the back, which is okay. When we talk about addition or multiplication, I don't think ordering is important. But when you're dealing with string, just make sure that in ordering, uh, it's not always that this one is in the front or in the back. You kind of need to like adjust accordingly. And yeah, uh, recurring factorial, yeah. Okay, well done. Okay, the next question is uh, the final sum. Uh, why I kind of leave that part out because it's slightly trickier. So we'll see what the people have done. Okay, um, I'll just, okay, I prefer, to be honest, I prefer, to be honest, right, personally, I prefer putting this one out, so, okay, um, yeah, I'll just copy down here. Personally, I would prefer this, putting this function out, because, I don't know, lah, like, personally, um, it depends. There are some cases where you want to put it inside. There are some cases where you want to put it outside. But I think the reason maybe why I want to put it outside is because it's something that, you know, it's also an answer to another question and it can be used multiple times. So yeah, we use uh, some, if n is less than zero, 10, return n, meaning that if it's already single digit, lah, we'll just stop. Eh? Okay, it's okay lah. I mean like if it's inside a function, it's okay. I mean it still works. Else, then you do, uh, you sum all the digits up using this function over here. And then you you call it back lah. This one, if you can see right, there's no computation at all. It's just like, just grouping everything up. Because you don't really need to do any computation lah. You just need to keep on mashing them up, mashing them up. Uh, this one is final sum. Uh, it's a little bit different because this one is uh, just for, this one is slightly different because like this one, instead of dealing it as numbers, they deal it with as string. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, this person deal it as a string. So this one is similar to our burger price case. So it will take in the first character and we'll take in the rest. While learn rest is not equals to one. Yep, but I think this is missing one bracket. And I think this one should be final sum instead of sum to call back its own function. Okay. Yeah, like for this one, it's like it checks whether it's a digit or not by. Okay, disconnected. Uh, so this one is the way he checks whether it's a digit or not is by actually checking the length of the string of n, which as we can see earlier that there are multiple ways to check a digit. This is one. This is another. I think another interesting way to check a digit is maybe. Um, uh, I think another way is. Uh, so check if digit. I think there are n is less than equals less than ten. Another way is like this one. I think another way that I like, I personally like is n divided by 10 is equal to zero. I mean, all these trees are okay lah. All these trees are valid. It's just, this one is my personal favorite. It's just personal, very personal. Don't have to follow. Unlike the for and while loop that I shared last time. Sorry, for the one done by somebody else, yeah, what will happen if it's an empty string? <coughs> That one is actually a very good point. 
Um, because I think with empty strings, sometimes it might cause a problem here. Let me just pull out my idea of E. It might be problematic when you try to slice the string when this is an empty string. Yeah. Okay, when uh okay, when an when an empty string is queried, it will just return an empty string. Uh. But I think based on the code, right, you should not be able to reach empty string because like you will always have a big digit, then smaller, smaller, smaller into a single digit, and then when it is a single digit, it will be the uh, recursion will be broken by the base case. In fact, even if your n is equal to zero, right, even zero when you convert it into a string, it won't be an empty string. Does that answer your question, Grace? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of you did a good job in different ways, which I kind of like. Oh, this one is creative. Oh, this one. Who, who did this? A TikToker. Okay, if you can only do iteration, it's okay. It takes time to learn recursion. You can always like scroll up, look above, whoever this TikToker is. But I kind of like the way you define this, uh, the final sum over here. I do like it. Like, if you can see, right, uh, sh uh, while number underscore it, it means that she will keep on summing it up until the integer is zero. Yeah. And if you know if zero is equivalent to false, so when the number the num int is zero, it will simply break as false. Uh. So yeah, I think this this one is actually a pretty interesting uh function over here. And I, I do like that you kinda use this already. Well well done, well done. Yeah. This is actually pretty good. I mean, for most of you, this this would be equal equivalent to this lah. But technically, like this alone is actually valid, and it's a good learning point for everyone. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, I think uh, I gotta okay lah. Like this is the time where I kind of need to say that I kind of need to move on already to the final part, which is variable scoping. So if you guys have any further questions regarding recursion or and iteration, right? We can discuss it further at the end of this tutorial, but I need to like finish the material first like, for variable scoping. Uh, now I wanna ask, I just wanna ask like, whether I can go fast or not. Like, uh, if you guys are uh, familiar with variable scoping and can do this, can you give me a thumbs up? If you don't understand what the hell is going on with variable scoping, give me a clap. <laughs> Three, four, five, five thumbs up, one clap. And the rest of you are just blur, okay. So, uh, okay, there's a lot of you are down. Okay, there's a 50-50 that are blur. Cat, cat. Okay, so basically for variable scoping, right, basically what we're trying to figure out here is that we can see this three piece of code, right? We try to, f uh, we are trying to figure out like what does the, what does this do, like, basically? Okay. So, um, yeah, we're trying to figure out what's the output. Like. So, basically, this will give me one output. Okay. For, for the first one, um, can anyone tell me what's the answer for the first question? Which is this one. Can you just type it in the chat? Mm, okay, the answer is zero zero. All right, I think it's pretty of uh, if it's not of pretty obvious. Here in this case, we have print x, which when we run this, we go to this part over here. I'll use a different. When we run this, we'll go over this part then this part, and then it prints x. 
It tries to find x inside the function. Cannot find one. Then because it cannot find one, it will go outside the box and find one here. Hence the zero. And then this one simply looks for this one. All right. What's the second one then? What's the answer for question number two? Answers for question number two? Yep, it's uh, zero, zero again. So we do this, full print x, cause this, moves here, and this x is equal to zero, so I'm gonna replace it with zero. Uh, the value of this goes inside here, so this is zero. So inside this function over here, we have y equals to zero. And then uh, we run this code over here and then looks for a y because there's a y, we'll print zero over here. So this y is actually ignored because there is a y inside the function. And then print x basically looks for something outside zero. All right, uh, third question, anyone? All right, the answer is uh, 9990. The reason for this is that, again, we run this. There's no parameter, so we'll just go here straight. We'll create this. Uh, we go here and declare x is equal to 999. And then print x, it will try to find an x inside this box, which it finds one over here as it will print 999. And then this print x out here will print this one. And it basically cannot find the value inside. Lah. What's the function ends, right? What's the function ends? It's basically, it crosses out. Hence, when it prints x over here, it will look for x outside the box. Lah. It cannot go inside the function. Is it clear? So the general rule is that, uh, if uh, you look, you the general look is, rule is, look up. If you cannot look up, look outside. So in this thing, right, print x, you need to look up. You need to look up. And then if you cannot find the value like this, you look outside. Look up then look outside. It's always that. Repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Are there anyone that is still uncertain? If you, if there are some of you that are still uncertain, maybe give me a thumbs up for those that are uncertain, that still doesn't understand what's going on. None? Okay. So I think, uh, okay, uh, today, I want to introduce you to one more tool. For, for those of you who don't know, it's called Python Tutor. So Python Tutor is actually like a website that, you know, like simulates your code. So in this case, uh, this is actually the same code as earlier. So we have a, uh, this code, right? Then it will show you the steps. In this case, uh, yeah, we follow, it declares x is zero in the global frame. And then that full print x, it means that it creates a function x which points to an object and then you call the function and then it will start running full print x and print x right because there's no x inside the full print x it will take the x from the global frame and then when you print x you print x again and if you can see right here right when you call the function it will create a temporary frame over here on the bottom here and then if you go once the function ends, right, the frame is gone. That's why in like our third code earlier, our third code earlier, why this this print x over here does not print this value, which we will see later. This is the second question to simulate it. Um, go, 
you declare x, you declare the value of y, you create a function. Now you full print x, but in this case, you declare the y is zero as this, the input, right? Okay. Next, you print y because there's already a y inside the box. Then you print that one instead. Then lastly, print x. Okay. For the last, if you need the visualization, the better visualization, you declare x, you define full print, then you full print. Since there's no value of, then inside full print, it declares x equals to 999. Hence, it will print. When it prints x, it will print 999 because inside this box says 999. But then next, the box is gone. So when you print x again, there's no 999 and you print zero. Okay. Uh, you can just Google it, find it Python tutor. It's going to be very useful, especially in future assignments when it gets more complicated. All right. Okay. So, um, as usual, we will have a slight detour. There are materials that are not covered in your tutorial worksheet, which is called short circuit logic. So I'm just going to go through it slightly fast because we are running out of time, but this one should be quite intuitive. Lah. So in this case, right, we have a function, uh, def f1, then true. And then, uh, yeah, lah. Basically, we have f1 and foo, a equals to 3 is a greater than 1, or f1 is then written yes, written no, print foo. I mean, if you kind of expect the, res the, the result should be yes, because like, like this one is true. Hence, in an or statement, what well, at least one statement is true, then it's enough. So now we want, now we have this actually particular function here, print haha, -ha. just slight modification, lah. okay? Uh, what is the output? And for the brevity of time, I'm just going to show you the output. The output is only yes. And you might be wondering why is haha -ha not printed? Right. Because there's this F1 here. Why is it not printed? So is it, isn't it supposed to be haha -ha yes? So if you can see the function F1 is actually skipped in this case. Why? Um, the reason why is as the title mentioned, is the short circuit logic. Mm -hmm. So in this case, right, the, this particular statement over here. Okay, that's a pretty bad color. If the left side of the OR can already decide the output already, the right scape of the OR will be skipped. So in this case, we already kind of determined that A is greater than 1 is true. Because it's true, right? Because it's an all statement and it's true, it means the entire statement is by default true, regardless of the value of the last one. Hence, because of this, for computational efficiency, this part will be skipped. Hence, because this part will be skipped, this entire block will also be skipped. So, yeah, short circuit logic. So, how about this? In this case, uh, the output will be no, same rule, it's an end. This one false as short circuit logic. This one, this part will be skipped. Because just by because of n right, and we know that the first part is false, by that merit alone, this uh, if statement will be evaluated as false. So because of this, right, it it can actually create some problems. So it because of this, right, it can actually dodge errors. So in this case, right, we have a function over here, an undeclared function, which is, yeah, there's no function. Uh, this function doesn't exist. And if you re remember, right, if you have this, if you do this, right, um, the code is supposed to break because like, i not defined. But then, because of this Python short circuiting thing, this entire part will be skipped at its entirety, which is not good. Lah. Okay, so when you come, when later during midterms or practicals, you face something like this, uh, just be very mindful that Python can short circuit logic and hence it does not need to evaluate the entire sentence. 
So please be very careful. And it is something that perhaps you want to take note now so that you don't forget in the future. Because we will not revisit this anymore. Something for your knowledge. But I think it is something that you kind of need to remember. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, yep. Okay. All right, then. Um, that's the end of today's tutorial. There are no fancy uh, collab notebooks. There are no fancy poll EV. It's just a plain traditional lesson where you guys learn. So um, I will stop the recording now. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to stay and ask anything. <laughs>